Good evening, once again, um, to those who are tuned in tonight, the What Guy Has Joined radio show, for another episode, pray that it be a blessing to a lot of people. Got a real good topic tonight, real good topic, I think that every person, every individual can relate to. And um, that topic is anger. Um, that's not just in marriage, just in general, but we're talking about dealing with anger in marriage. Um, dealing with anger in marriage. I, I wanna give credit to uh, Roy Millam who um, I got a lot of my study notes um, this evening in regards to that. But we're going to give just maybe a, another minute or two and we're going to go ahead and get started um, with this topic. This uh, dynamic topic of dealing with it. How do you how do you deal with anger in your marriage? You might be married to somebody who has anger issues or the anger issue might be you yourself but um that's what we're going to discuss tonight talking about how to deal with um anger in marriage so let's real quick uh, open with a word of prayer uh, father we thank you tonight um for this lesson i thank you for all of those who are going to tune in all of those who uh, we'll replay this message, God. I pray that you would just um, captivate the minds and hearts of people to be locked in, Lord, and um, just listen to uh, your word and ways to deal um, with this monster, uh, Lord, called anger um, in inappropriate ways, Lord. Uh, help us to turn it to appropriate ways. And I just thank you for every person tonight. I pray that you meet every need. And I pray that someone will be helped. But most importantly, I pray that you would get the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shout out to uh, everyone who is already tuned in, those who will tune in. Um, but again, and, and, if, and if you're tuning in, uh, I encourage you to go and share the broadcast. Um, if you're in a relationship, if you're able to get your spouse to join in, um, that would be great. Um, I see people starting to tune in now. Uh, again, make sure you share the broadcast. Thank you for tuning in um, to this show tonight. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, if you missed some of it, of course, you can always replay. Um, but again, this is the What God Has Joined radio show every first uh, Sunday of the month. But tonight, our topic, again, is dealing with anger in marriage. Question do you have anger um, in your relationship? Um, do you have anger in your marriage? Is that an issue um, in your relationship? You know, do you deal with uh, someone being angry? Or does it seem like you always angry? Um, you're always frustrated um, in your relationship. And then we want to look at why, you know, what's the reason, what's the underlying cause? Um, sometimes you can think what, what is the reason is not truly the reason. So we want to look at what, what's the underlying cause. And we're going to go um, straight to our notes. Um, of course, comments um, are welcome throughout the show. But the first thing I want to open up, listen at this. It says, um, anger is natural. Um, it's it's a natural God-given emotion. Um, we use it to be alerted uh, to potential problems and dangers. Anger in itself is not a problem per se. Listen at this. The problem is failing to manage anger effectively. I'd like to say shout out to my wife. Um, thank you for tuning in. Um, Thank you for tuning in. Shout out to my wife. Got her uh, doctor's degree. Just want to shout her out. Show her some love this evening um, on this past weekend. And my sister-in-law, Ashley, as well. All right. So managing. So listen, 
it's normal to to be angry. Did you know that 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 it's possible? Like it's not. Listen, if you get angry, it doesn't mean that you're not holy and you don't have the Holy Spirit and you're not godly. If you get angry, people are gonna get angry. Even God Himself has a wrath and have it, has an anger. And if we're made in the image of God, He built us to be, you know, to the to where we could get angry. But the problem is when anger takes over us, when anger swallows us up. Amen. When it gets the best of us. Many people are sleeping in their grave over a decision that they made when they're angry when they was angry. So many people, many marriages have been destroyed not over the bedroom, not over finances, but over frustration and over anger. Many marriages have crumbled. There was nothing wrong in no other areas. It was just issues of, of getting upset. Because guess what? Every now and then, if you're in a relationship, who you're in a relationship with is going to get on your nerves. Listen, if you meet people and they tell you that they never have problems and that they never disagree and that they never get upset, don't believe them. No, because we all, it's in the Bible teaching us how to deal with anger because God knew that we were going to get angry, right? So I want, I, want, I want you, and I can send this to you if you need it, but I want you to ask yourself these few questions real quick. Number one, do you often lose your cool and act out of anger towards your spouse by threatening divorce or by threatening to leave, or by walking out on him or her when he or she does something or, fail, or fails to do something that frustrates and upsets you? Do you threat divorce or walking out? Do you lose your cool? And you can answer that rarely, occasionally, frequently in your own mind, right? Here's another one. Do you sometimes speak loudly, raise your voice, a scream belittling or cursing at your spouse when he or she disagrees with you. Rarely, occasionally, frequently. How often do you do that? Do you put, and, and I, I advise, this is one of those uh, shows that you want to take notes or go back and take notes. I'm telling you. Um, but do you sometimes get angry with your spouse and express your anger with criticism? Blame and put downs like when you get in an argument, do you pull from something or do you criticize areas where they have been vulnerable to you and told you some of their most intimate secrets and then you take that and use it against them? You know, that's dangerous. That's dangerous when you do that because it puts up a wall where they they'll never want to do that again. Listen at this one. Do you have times when you. When your anger spews out and hurts your spouse's feelings, you know, do you have times when you just lash out and, and hurt your spouse's feelings? Listen at this one. If someone you didn't know offends you, like a salesman, do you lash out and give them a piece of your mind? Hmm? Uh, when you're upset or frustrated, do you say or do things that you later regret? You know, do you do you do things that you later regret when you when you're frustrated, when you get upset? And again, you answer these with rarely, occasionally, or frequently. You know, and and, and when you answer those, it takes an honest answer. Do I do that stuff? Do I get upset? When somebody offends me, do I use criticism on my wife or my husband when they make me mad or my girlfriend or my boyfriend, whatever the case may be? I don't know who's tuned, uh, tuned in tonight. And then you can rate those, um, which, like I said, this is just a, a, a test um, to see where you're at in your anger. In your anger, because one thing we want to keep in mind, anger affects the health of our marriage. Some notes I got here. 
The inappropriate expression of anger on the part of one spouse can hurt both spouses deeply and cause significant harm to their marriage in the following ways. Number one, it can damage the safe feeling and trust. When somebody has trust for another and you deal with anger and you get upset and you lash out, it damages that feeling of trust. Um, it damages self-esteem by resulting in guilt and shame. Um, it makes one fearful of self-giving and receiving love when we lash out. It introduces and increases a fear of being hurt. It's almost like the person starts looking to be hurt. Result in the spouse of being distant. Sometimes somebody say, why is my mate seem like they just growing away from me? Well, it could be because of how we've been lashing out to them. It brings division. It separates. It leads to sadness, loneliness, anxiety. Um, wound the sense of being special. And the gift of being one spouse. They no longer feel like a gift. They feel like a burden. Check this one out. It increases sexual temptation. Sometimes the other mate is a little bit more vulnerable when the other person has beat them up with words, beat them up um, with their anger, beat them up, you know, um, with what they say. Inappropriate expression of anger in marriage can be a major source of marital distress and unhappiness. So listen at this. Recognizing and managing this unruly emotion can greatly enhance the degree of security and happiness that you and your spouse uh, want to achieve in your marriage. So, number one, we want to recognize it, right? We want to recognize if I have an issue. Number one, I got to be honest with myself. If I have an issue, sometimes... Even me, I have issues. Sometimes I get upset so fast. And I know I'm not the only one. You know, sometimes you get upset so fast. Especially if it's something that's done that's repetitive. It can make you upset. It can frustrate you. Your mate can frustrate you by little things they do. That get on your nerves that they know. Matter of fact, sometimes your mate might do something to get on your nerves just to make you mad. Just to make you upset, they might do something uh, just to make you upset. So, like, if your anger is not in control, then you're going to lash out. Listen, you give people power um, when, you, when you allow uh, anger to rule you. Anger is, 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 is like a, um, ungodly anger is like a demon that can rule you. And people have power. And I tell uh, my students all the time. What's up, Mike? It's my brother right there, Mike Tucker. Appreciate you tuning in, man. Ang I, I tell my students all the time, like, anger is something that it's like a demon. When you give people power over you and you get mad and upset so fast, you know, other people see it and they'll try to take advantage of that. And you get pulled in all these different directions. And people have power over you. Y'all make sure y'all share the broadcast, those who are tuned in and and I think it's important to say this there's not one of us who doesn't occasionally get upset and angry with our spouse you can't live together under the same roof for too long without finding things you disagree about things that really make you upset with each other that's that's normal that's gonna happen we talking about how to deal with it how can I deal with it and one way to deal with it, listen at this, we got to get to the root of the problem. We got we to gotta find out. Listen, there's people right now who's listening who have anger issues and have not taken the time to research and dig and find out why I'm hurt. Why am I angry? Why am I lashing out on my spouse? Why do I get upset so fast? There's some people who know. Some people already know just something that happened to me. But there's other people who haven't, you know, you just, it just crept in on you. And, and now you just get upset so fast. 
But we, number one, we want to find out why am I angry? Because you can never truly heal and, until you find the root of it and then attack it and then address it. This is why I'm hurt. This is why I'm angry. You know, my dad wasn't there for me. Or my mother wasn't there for me. Or my last husband scarred me so bad. My last wife scarred me so bad. You know, I got this 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 cut and it's it's bleeding and everybody else is feeling you know, a lot of times people deal take stuff that they don't even deserve. Um, because they wasn't the one that hurt you, but other people are being affected. There's people in marriages right now that are taking it out on whoever they're married to now because of something that happened in their last marriage. It might be somebody let you down. Uh, you had some great loss. Um, uh, f uh, feelings of entitlement. You feel like you deserve something that you're not getting. Um, you got a history of people taking advantage of you. That stuff can make you, it can make you angry. You were neglected as a child. Um, unforgiveness towards somebody else. Uh, or resentful thoughts or feelings towards somebody else. Uh, fear and anxiety. Listen, if you got fear, it can make you angry. Because you're so scared, you just, ugh, anything can just make you mad. Anything can just make you upset. Um, you're dealing with depression. It can make you angry. Shouts out to those who tuned in tonight. So we want to we want to figure out number one, research what is it that's causing my anger? Why am I always fussing and why am I always screaming and why am I always upset? Because that needs to be healed. Because. A person can't truly live, can't enjoy life if they're always upset, they're always angry. Shoot, sometimes my dog make me upset. Use the bathroom on the floor. I'm, I know you know the difference between the floor and the outside. And if you get popped or something once or two, twice, you should know not to use the bathroom on the floor. You know, and it gets you upset. Can make you angry and frustrated. Stuff get to us and stuff builds up. Some people try to keep stuff compressed. Compressing your anger doesn't heal your anger. I talk to people all the time. They say, well, I'm just going to take it. I'm just going to go through it. Uh, you know, I don't want to deal with, you know, how they're going to respond. But it ha if we marry, I don't want to be married 50 years and have all that stuff build up. That's how people end up losing their mind and getting divorces and killing one another because of pent up, built up frustration that needs to be released. It needs. I need to find out what's what's the root of this so I can get some some healing from this thing. So we're gonna give some quick points and we out of here. Thank y'all for tuned in. Make sure you share the broadcast in the Bible. And, and James 1, listen at these instructions. Listen, listen. Be quick to hear. Be quick to hear. How many times does somebody say something you already know what you're going to say back before they even finish what they're saying? You take that first little point, they say, I already know how I'm coming back. <laughs> we all know about that. You know what I'm saying? Be quick to hear. Not just listen, but to hear what they're saying. And then watch this. Be slow to speak. This is some good ingredients right here. I don't know if y'all getting this. Be slow to speak. Quick to hear, slow to speak. We the complete opposite. We slow to hear and we quick to speak. I don't want to hear what you're saying. I'm going to say what I got to say. And then watch this one. Final one. Be slow to anger. Don't get upset so fast. Don't get upset so easy. Don't let stuff make you upset so fast, James said. And if you be quick to hear and slow to speak, sometimes you can take stuff in in your marriage, process it. Sometimes it's good not to 
speak. Sometimes it's good just to be quiet. What's going on, my brother Josh, man? I ain't talked to you in a while, man. I appreciate your comments tonight. Right? So sometimes, sometimes in a relationship, it's, it's good not to speak. Right? In a, in a disagreement. This is some good ingredients. Somebody take this tonight as I take it. Sometimes when you disagreeing with somebody, sometimes it's best just to be quiet. That's what the Bible say. Be slow to speak. Don't say nothing. You know what I mean? You, you mess up the devil when, when you don't say nothing. When somebody making a point and you take that point in and you don't say nothing. You got time. Because when you speak out of anger, it's a scripture that says the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Listen at that. The wrath, my wrath, never works God's righteousness. When I'm really, wrath is like, man, you furious. You can even say the right thing in wrath. And it don't work God's righteousness because of how my heart is. You need to go to church and get saved. You're going to burn. You're going to go to hell. That ain't working God's righteousness. You know what I mean? You deliver that thing in love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. It's not what you say. It's how you say it. And then sometimes it's how you receive it. Be slow to get angry, James said. Listen, that this scripture doesn't tell us never to feel angry, but rather to be angry and sin not. I can be upset with something my wife did, but that don't mean I have to sin. Listen, when somebody do, does us wrong, it doesn't give us a license to sin. Some Christians think when folk make you mad, it give you a license to sin. The Bible say be angry. Yeah, you are, you're angry, but sin not. Think of how often God is angry with us, but he don't just, well, I'm just going to mush them out. I'm tired of them. I'm just going to mush them out. I'm just going to take them, take their life. How patient is God with us? You know what I'm saying? How loving it. How many times do we mess up and God is so patient? He's fussed. He's angry with us, but then he still love us. Anger in and of itself is not wrong. What is wrong when we have wrong thoughts, reaction, behaviors, and response to our anger? I hope we're getting our, our point tonight. Final, final points here is we, we realize anger is so dangerous. Final two points, and we're going to pack this thing up. It's an impact of anger in our marriage. It impacts our marriage in a negative way, a negative impact. For example, research demonstrates that a tenfold increase of risk of symptoms, get this, depression is associated with anger and marital discord. Excessive anger in marriage is also associated in increased blood pressure, impaired immune functions, and a poor prognostic for spouses with culinary artery disease and congestive heart failure. That's why the Bible tells us in Psalm 37 and 8 to cease from anger. It can cause you bodily harm. When you're upset, it can make you sick. That's why the Bible says a merry heart do good like medicine. It's not okay to be angry and walk around and be angry. There are many people in the grave because they couldn't control their anger. That demon, it just kept working on them. and They wouldn't forgive somebody who'd done them wrong. And they were just angry and mad and frustrated and didn't want to let it go and held on to it and I'm right and they shouldn't be treating me like this and they're angry and it's affecting their health while the other person's walking around and they're not even upset. they just cool and calm. Some people can do you wrong and just as cool and calm. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, even people in your relationship, your spouse might do you wrong and, you know, they don't even think much about it, but you're so frustrated, it's affecting your health, your hair falling out, you know, uh, you're losing weight, you're not eating, you know, it affects you on so many ways and the enemy uses anger as a way to, to disconnect relationships. 
He know he can't get you uh, in your intimacy. Uh, that's good. Your finances are pretty good. You know, your communication is okay, but it just got this issue with anger. Just little stuff. The devil will take little stuff and make it big. He'll blow it up. You know, he should have took out the trash. He don't never take out. She don't never wash the dishes. She ain't cooking dinner. Or, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I put the kids to sleep last night. Why don't you put them to sleep tonight? I'm always putting them to sleep. You know, marriage is about being full of uh, mercy. Oh. We got to come in. I feel like most arguments start in the bedroom and turn into frustration and bills. To and, 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 and a lot of times they can. Uh, Michael, thank you for your comment. A lot of them can start. The, and they not just, they can start in so many areas. And, and listen, and I'm glad of his comment because sometimes you're not doing anything. It's just what the other person is doing. It's something that they're doing continual that's frustrating you. But you you are confident that this is the person that God joined to you. So let me make that point. There's many people that can be in relationships, but God didn't join you. And there is no success in that. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. What God has joined together. See, because what God joins together, God is the one who will make it work. God's not going to bless sin. Right? God's not going to bless a union that he didn't sanction, that he didn't join together. The Bible says what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. So I just want to make that point just for somebody who may be listening. But a lot of arguments start in different places and then they escalate. And sometimes they can start over something so small. I appreciate your comment, Michael. It, sometimes they can smart, start over something so small, but then the enemy make a suggestion. You don't deserve that. Don't let them get away with that. If you let them get away with that, they're going to start building on it. They're going to do it over and over again. And you always have to reflect your marriage to your relationship with God. God takes so much from us, and we don't want to take nothing. But see, when we turn over, see, listen, oh God, thank you. There are situations that God is going to allow to happen in our marriage. Things that we're going to be frustrated with that he know we can't handle. And, and instead of us turning to him, sometimes we try to take it and handle it ourselves. When in reality, God allowed it to happen so we can learn how to depend on him in all areas. Some people don't want to hear that, but God allows things to happen so we can depend on him. There's some things in our relationship that we'll never fix in our own strength. Whew, God almighty. There's some stuff that, that, that is it says God only. There's some stuff that your wife do that it says God only. There's some stuff that your husband does that frustrates you and it's marked God only. You, God, wait, well, I'm going to let you go ahead, Fred. Go on, try to fix it then. That's stuff right now in my marriage. I know only God, right? And I'm sure it's stuff that April deal with me, and it's only God. Only God can fix it. Whew, God Almighty. Only God can fix stuff in our relationship. If there's marriage issues, frustrations, go to God with it. Don't unload on your wife. Unload to God. I wonder if we unload it to God like we unload on our spouse, what would happen? If I unload it with prayer, if I unload it with fasting, if I unload it with seeking God's word, what do I do about this situation, God? And then you stand there until God fit. God, I'm standing on your word till you fit. Your word going to have to end up being wrong because I'm standing on your word and I refuse to bend. Whew. Boy, you're talking about some results in your relationship. Oh, God. Let me close this out. Best ways to deal with anger in marriage. The best way to resolve inappropriate expressions in, of anger in marriage is to first get to the root of the anger of the problem. Have you ever been hurt or emotionally wounded? 
at some early stage of life? Have you ever been a victim of verbal, mental, emotional, sexual, or physical abuse? Right? So we got to get to the root of it. Expressing anger, especially in marriage, should be short-lived, dealt with in a Christ-like biblical manner, and forgotten, preferably before the end of the day. When we're upset, Spouses who are serious about dealing with anger, listen at this, in their marriage should refrain from letting the sun go down on their anger by resolving conflicts and dealing with anger as it occurs daily. Don't give no room for the devil. Couples can experience the joy of viewing each day as a new beginning with no residue of negativity from the previous 24 hours. Mmm. Ooh. My, my, my. I got to come in here. Uh, amen. Some people think telling other people their problems is okay instead of taking it to God and leave it there and watch him work it out. Amen, Tina. That's so true. So true. That's, that's so true, you know. And there's two people you should take your problem to in your marriage. There's two people. God and your spouse. Right? Do I believe that some people can encourage you in your relationship? Yeah, as long as they're encouraging you. As long as they lifting and building you up. But go to God first. And anything they tell you should be confirmation of what God already told you. What God already encouraged you to do. Right? And God's answer is never give up. <laughs> Keep fighting. If it's, if it's what God joined, it's never, hey, you need to get out of there. I'm saying if God joined it. If God join, I want to say that because some people might be in a relationship and God tell you to get out because you ain't supposed to be in it anyway. But that's a whole other story, right? So we supposed to handle the situations quickly. Don't let them fester. Don't let them build. Don't let them escalate. Don't let the sun go down on your wrath. And there's multiple reasons. Some people say a person might not wake up the next day, which could be true. But also the Bible say give no place to the devil because when we give him room, he operates. Me and my wife often say it. He don't need but a crack. He don't need but a little bitty crack to get in that thing anyway. You know what I mean? So I'm trying to keep my guard up. And this is just one area of many. Anger. This one area of many. So get to the source of our anger. And we closing right here. Search your heart. Be honest with yourself. Ask God to help you see what the source of your anger is. Ask yourself tough questions. Talk, um, talk to God about it. Ask him about it. Then listen quietly for God to speak to you and seek help if you have to from some counselor, somebody to help you um, in that relationship. And counseling is not a bad thing. I actually recommend it. Godly counsel, not just any kind of counsel, but godly counsel. And if we have issues with anger, we need to seek what they are. And, and, and get them fixed. I want to say this as I close. It's not okay to go around and be angry. As already been explained, it affects your marriage. It affects your body. It affects your mind. It affects your relationship. It affects, it affects your, your daily living. Anger was never meant to dominate and crush and destroy our life. When we get angry, we get upset in our relationships. That's normal, but it's not normal if we let it fester, if we let it, let it linger, and then it starts tearing our marriage apart. We have to learn how to communicate. And that's a key word. We have to learn how to talk, to, to talk through some things. We have to learn how um, to allow God to work out things in our marriage and not take it in our own power, uh, in our own strength. Amen. So I thank everybody tuned in tonight. Uh, shouts out to everybody who's tuned in. If you just tuning in, I see some people just jumping on. Make sure you go back and play. I feel like you'll be blessed listening to this whole message. Um, I pray I said something. Uh, God said something through me that might help you in your relationship um, and dealing with anger and frustration with when your mate don't do what you think they should do or act the way they think you should. You know, you think they should act. Um, that don't mean jump up and get out of there. 
You know what I mean? God allows things to happen so y'all can come together, seek him um, so you can keep on growing. And believe if you trust God, um, your best days are still in front of you. For your marriage, if you trust in God and you're not giving up and you believe God joined, you know God joined y'all together. Don't let the devil ruin and crush your relationship. No, you stand there, you fight for your marriage. You go and war for your spouse. They doing something you don't agree with. If you struggling in areas, you go and war against your own flesh. Against your own self. If you know you being an issue in your relationship, you go to war with God. Go to war in prayer with God against yourself. You and God, through prayer, double team yourself and see if God don't show you a better side of yourself. Amen. I'm closing on that. Father, we thank you tonight um, for this word, for this lesson. I thank you for those who tuned in. I thank you for how my heart's been encouraged. I pray that somebody else have been encouraged, God. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us overcome the demon of anger and wrath, Lord, that's not in your will. And I pray that we will be better people as we seek you. Lord, somebody would be delivered from this frustration, from past hurt, past letdown, scars, failures. Somebody who did somebody wrong, Lord, even in their younger life and everyone else is being affected by it. God, you're able to heal them. I thank you tonight. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Every, every first Sunday. Every first Sunday, y'all tune in. Make sure you share the broadcast. Shouts out to Michael, Tina. Thank you for tuning in. I saw Mika, my wife, everybody who tuned in tonight, commented. Um, thank y'all for tuning in. Right now, look on your screen, click share. Somebody else need to hear this word. Y'all be blessed. Boy, gospel out.